when you've come through the fire, you know, when you've come through something like triple bypass, when you've come through something like a failed marriage and to have the quality of life that I have every single day, you know, I can't help but thank God for it, you know, mm. because I can't believe I get to do this every day. From near death to one of the top real estate agents here in the one of the hottest cities in the country, I've got a special guest today. We're going to talk all about how he made it from the deathbed all the way to the top. I've got Mr. Bill Lurk here with me from Hive Nashville. He's one of the co-owners of that brokerage. He has been in real estate for 15 years, and since 2020, he's helped over 135 families buy and sell real estate. He loves to travel. He's got an amazing wife, Allison, five children and three grandchildren, a veteran of the U.S. Army. He's a former on-air host and music program director and award-winning radio stations in Minnesota, Iowa, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Kansas, and Delaware. Yep. And if you can't tell, he is uh, a current voice of announcer guy on the Veggie's Tales po Veggie Tales podcast. And if you can't tell he's in radio, you need to turn your radio off. What's up, up Mark? <laughs> so, Bill, thanks for coming, man. Always great to hear you. He's one of my great friends, and uh, we hang out in the same circles and uh, great record collection, great bourbon collection. But, man, I want to hear, uh, tell, I want the fans to hear, the people out there to hear how you made this turnaround so many years not so long ago you nearly died yeah yeah um before i jump to that i wish it was 15 years in real estate it's only oh, 10 10 years i'm in sorry 2014 but 10 that's years. okay it right. feels like 15 some days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man uh 2010 i um uh just recently october uh 4th of this past year 20 23 i celebrated my 13th anniversary of a uh, new life so 2010 uh, at the age of 45, I had triple bypass heart surgery wow. um, in Wichita, Kansas. Wow. And um, what led up to that? You know, I had uh, I had uh, lived an unhealthy lifestyle and made some really bad choices for a long time as a coping mechanism, mm -hmm. you know, and as a and, and my coping mechanism at that time was uh, something that, you know, we all have tapes and stories that we play, you know, and one of those from my childhood was my mom would always say to me, I grew up as an only child and, um, I would come home from school and, uh, you know, bad day, whatever, junior high moved around a lot as a kid. My mom would always say to me, eat something, you'll feel better you know, growing up in Philadelphia. And so I did, you know, and, and when you're a teen in early twenties and, you know, early thirties or whatever, it doesn't matter that much. But then I was in an unhealthy relationship for a long time. And, and, uh, and to, to, to cope with that unhealthy relationship, uh, I ate a lot, you know, got up to 325 pounds and, and, um, you know, um, just, just led to that day in, uh, in Kansas where I had to have that operation unexpectedly, you know, no, no warning, just kind of, wow. kind of, uh, had been out of the country the week before and, um, uh, came back and, and felt pretty rotten and went in for a heart cath and they said, we're taking you across the street. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? They said, we're taking you across the street. You need bypass surgery. I said, what, you know? And, uh, I, I didn't have it for a couple of days because the surgeon they wanted me you know, to have do it to me wasn't available. But um, yeah, so that was a big, you know, it was a big uh, 180 for me. That was a realization, one of those moments of, okay, you you really do have one life to live. What are you going to do with it? You felt like you got a second lease on life. I absolutely got a second lease on life, Mark. I absolutely got a second lease on life, man. That was a huge turning point for me in my way of thinking, uh, in, in, in how I went about the rest of my life and how I continue to go about my life today. I mean, uh, I was living in Kansas at the time, and uh, I'm an East Coast guy, you know, a landlocked as I could be. And uh, it was at that point, I'm like, wow. What am I doing in Kansas? Yeah. <laughs> I got to get back to the East Coast, right. you know, where my roots are, where my people are, and uh, where the ocean is, you know? Yeah. So I can go to the beach more. And uh, I got to live. So I decided that uh, I was going to live. So how'd you end up in Nashville here? So um, I came to Nashville from Delaware in uh, 2017. Um, hit the life reset button again in 2017. Um, long marriage ended 
And um, I had been, as you mentioned, in uh, radio, um, in the music industry for for 28 years. I was really fortunate to do um, eight years in ma- in mainstream music and, and country and rock music on air. And as a program uh, director, I remember the first CD I ever played on a country station was Alan Jackson's Here in the Real World, probably 1989, man, maybe 1990. I was like, a CD, what is that? Um, that was cool. And, uh, but anyways, uh, I hit the life reset button in, in 2017. I left, uh, left the, the music industry and broadcasting. I had been doing real estate part-time, uh, started that in 2014 and, um, decided, decided to come down to Nashville, you know, and, and start over and, and, uh, just from scratch, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, new slate, clean slate, you know, step of faith, you know, um, you know, one of the things that I've discovered um, is if you, ju- you just gotta, you just gotta go for it. You know, you, you've, you've got to do it. Um, um, you've got to ask the questions. You've got to move forward. I always go back to this scene from the Indiana Jones movie. Uh, the, the one with the, the Holy grail. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what that one's called. Um, but, um, I should know the title of it, but there's this scene where he, um, he, um, he's got to get to the guy who's got the cup, you know, the Holy grail cup. And he's, he's got through all the puzzles. Sean Connery's dad's out there shot from the Nazis, you know, Mm -hmm. laying on the ground and he gets to the end of the the cave and there's a cliff there. And he's, and he's got to, he's got to, he doesn't, there's nothing there. It looks like a giant ravine. He's going to fall to his death. And he, and he decides he's going to take a step of faith and he puts his leg out there and lo and behold, it lands on rock. You know, so that's what you got to do in life, man. That's what I did in 2017. I took that step, put it out there, and um, here we are today in Nashville, Franklin, Tennessee, living the dream. Helping lots of folks. I mean, that's what it's about. Real estate is really, you hooked up with, uh, with Hive, with Michael Gomez. Yeah. Uh, you were with Keller Williams for a while, but then it seems to really take off in the last few years. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. What do you attribute that to? You know, uh, kindness. Um, I've known Michael Gomez uh, for a long time now. We met in the in in Christian Radio. I did that for twenty years, and um, Michael was was always kind. I met him on some artist visits to our radio stations, and we connected. I knew he was dealing doing real estate while he was touring, mm-hmm. and I uh, was following his success. You know, Michael, as you know, early adopter of social media, Mm -hmm. you know, loves the social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, you know, reels, all this stuff we're doing today. He was an early adopter. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was uh, paying attention to what he was doing. And and I picked his brain a lot about real estate when I was just starting out in Delaware. And then when 2017 happened, I had to hit the reset button. You know, Mike and I had a conversation about about uh, he, he said, if you do decide, you know, to come to Nashville. Um, I need a guy like you, you know, yeah. I need a guy like you. And, um, so I, I, as you mentioned, I took that step of faith and, um, and I came down and Michael and I worked together at Benchmark for a while. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I went to Keller Williams, uh, for a while and Mike went to Compass for a while. And, uh, in 2022, um, actually in 2021, Mike called me while he was filming the TV show, Flipping Showdown in mm-hmm. Atlanta. And he called me in July of 2021 and said, hey, start thinking and start thinking about how we can work together again. Because we mm. did good together, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, so I started thinking about it. And then uh, at the end of 2021, uh, Mike decided he was starting Hive. And, and he'd always said, you know, when we always joked about it, Mark, you know, someday we're going to open our own brokerage together, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, at the end of... Uh, 2021, he's like, I got to leave Compass. And I'm, and I'm like, well, I'm ready to be done <laughs> what I'm doing right now. And uh, in uh, January of 2022, we started, uh, we started Hive Nashville. It was me and Mike, Brenda White, our superstar admin, and Willie Gomez, Mike's brother. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, today um, we're, we're at like 34, 35 realtors, I think. Mm-hmm. Somewhere between 30 and 35. I should probably know that exact number. Um, I think we lost a guy last week, though, which is fine. Um, he was just going in a different direction, um, going in a different career direction. And um, and then me and Mike and, and a couple admins. And and uh, I'll text Mike every day and say, I can't believe we get to do this every day. That is your saying. Uh, I can't believe we get to do this every day. I, I can can't vouch believe for that. it, man. Yeah. And tell people what you mean by that. Um, 
you know, when you've come through the fire, you know, when you've come through something like triple bypass, when you've come through something like a failed marriage and to have the quality of life that I have every single day, you know, I can't help but thank God for it, you know, mm. because I can't believe I get to do this every day. I remember saying to my therapist one time when I was going through uh, my marriage breaking up, I, I was, I said to him, how do people get through this without Jesus? And he yeah. was like, they don't, they either go crazy right. or they kill themselves, you know, yeah. Yeah. and, or, you know, just the alternatives are not good. So I made a decision. I was going to keep going. I've got kids, I've got grandkids and, um, you know, I've got this life to live and, and, uh, and that, that attitude of gratitude, as you know, will carry you through a lot of storms. It'll carry and we're you all glad you, you decided to push through. I mean, it's been fun to watch you guys grow. I mean, and it's not like you're just listing homes or in helping buyers. I mean, you're, you're out there investing, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're out there doing it along what you're doing the things that you're advising clients to do, even in tough markets. I mean, you've got projects going and things like that. And so yeah. I always love seeing you guys grow and expand and push yourselves. Um, and it just seems to success just seems to follow you guys. Well, I might seem like I got it all together, but I don't <laughs> every day. I mean, you know, for a long time, I struggled with imposter syndrome, you know, of like, do I actually deserve this? You know, do I deserve this life? You know? Yeah. And, um, and I've in the last couple of years, I've accepted that, you know, this is this is who I am. This is my plan. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be doing what somebody else is doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, I just come from that mindset every day of, you know, uh, I learned a lot in my time in, in broadcasting and radio. And and one of the things that I stuck with me for all this time is really two key questions that everybody Every living human being, no matter what country, place they live at in the entire world, want to know is, number one is, um, am I alone and do I matter? Mm. You know, those are the two questions every single human being wants right. to know. And um, number one, no, no, you're not alone. And number two is absolutely you matter. I mean, you were created, right. you know, absolutely you matter. Yeah. And then, you know, so if you, if you kind of, you know, funnel that into your being, okay. Uh, then I've got things that, you know, every day I wake up, I've got things to do, you know? And then when it comes to real estate, you know, and, and what we're doing, helping people in real estate, you know, um, the, the, the thing is mindset, number one, okay, I'm going to help these people. I'm going to take care of these people. I'm going to win, you know? And number two is uh, I'm going to follow up, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to let people know that they matter you know, and I'm going to serve them at such a high level, so far above anyone else that, you know, it doesn't matter what you tell them. People are going to remember how you make them feel. Right. Right. So if you can make them feel great, you're going to be successful. You're going right. to win. I just think about how this confluence of events really just helped shape your, your whole work ethic, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, just by the fact of, <laughs> you know, this near death experience and failed marriage and then uh, moving, starting over with a clean slate and real estate. It was not like you just started out of the gate blowing, blowing the doors off no. real estate. So, I mean, I don't no. want people to think that. I mean, because no. I know a lot of agents right there, right now are struggling. And they so are. They may have only Absolutely. gotten in the business in the last couple of years. And so talk about now, like, what would you say to those agents out there that might be, you know, having a hard time right now? Get up every single day and put your real estate boots on. And, and find ways to help people, find ways to connect with people and have meetings with people, whatever that looks like. If you can't afford coffee, you know, if you can't afford coffee meetings, get on Zoom, yeah. you know, get on FaceTime, you know, let people know you care about them, bring value to their lives in some way. You know, 2019, um, right before COVID, I was driving a truck for Amazon part-time. You know, I was uh, driving a truck for Lowe's, um, delivering appliances in tall skinnies in Nashville, you know, at 53 years old or 54 years old, however old I was then, 55, I don't know, mm -hmm. losing track, you know, I can't count anymore. Hmm. Um, but, you know, if you're struggling, you know, find a way to add value to the people in your sphere that you want to help. Yeah. Uh, whatever that looks like for you, um, get up every single day, put your real estate boots on. If you've got to go out there and get a second gig to, to keep 
keep it going, keep it going, you know, mm-hmm. but don't sit around and play Xbox all day or right. uh, sit on TikTok all day. You know, you were created for a purpose. You were created to help people, you know, with your unique gifts, talents, and abilities that have been God given to you. And if you feel like real estate is your lane, if you feel like that's your niche, your arena, right. th- then, then go after it wholeheartedly. Right. And then like I mean, a lot of people are dealing with um, anxiety, you mm-hmm. know, stress, yep. you know, depression right now. I mean, is it's a hard industry. I hard. mean, it's one of the hardest industries out there. Mm-hmm. And this is probably the hardest market that we've experienced in the last, I mean, I've been doing this 27 years and it's a tough market. It's so, tough. You know, but talk about what it takes or what should people do and how you see people, you know, it playing out in people like anxiety and things like that. Cause I know for me, it's been something where I've had to reassess and look at like, what does it, what does it mean right now to maintain, you know, what a mental fitness, you know? So what do you do and what do you, what are you seeing out there? Well, number one is we can't let fear take over because fear drives our entire world. Mm. Everything that is happening in our world right now on the news, um, with world religions, with um, culture in our nation is is fear based and fear driven. Right. And you've got to you've got to say I'm not going to be I'm not going to subscribe to that fear because I, I know where I'm at today and based on where I was before I know everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, no matter what. You know, everybody thinks certain things that happen in life are an emergency. Mm. The real emergency is when you get the phone call that says get to the hospital. Right. You know, dad's had a heart attack or right. get to the hospital. Um, your son's been in an accident. You know, those are the real emergencies in this world. Not everything that everybody else creates to be the real emergency. Mm. So I get up every single day and I, I have my quiet time. You know, I make sure that I, I, I have my quiet time. I get my exercise in. You know, I, I get I get my personal development going. And I mean, it's, it's a broken record. I mean, you don't have to you don't have to reinvent success. You know, you just, you find who's been successful and you follow in their shoes. You adapt it to what works for you, but you keep it moving forward. Yeah. You know, every single day. And yeah, it's a hard market. There's no doubt about it. I have compassion. I mean, you know, my closings are down this year and, but it's okay. I'm going to be okay. Cause I'm in the long game. Right. It is a long game. I mean, and, and there are better days ahead, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, you have to kind of go back to the basics, but you also have to sort of change some things. I mean, I think you a lot of times people kind of got in this idea, all of us, where it was just, you know, closings falling from the sky almost. Mm-hmm. And then when that just completely shifts, it's like, okay, well, what do I do? Well, like for myself, I've really poured a lot into my business. Yeah. So I have a lot of personal development, mm-hmm. a lot of marketing, uh, a lot of changes for the good to where I've got initiatives going out that are going to propel through 2024 and 2025. So now's the time to plan yeah, absolutely. for the future. I mean, so take the time where you're not having to show 10 houses in a day mm-hmm. and and plan and do the things. Not everything costs money either. Some mm-hmm. of it does, but nope. I think right now also it's okay to spend some money to take one step back in order to go three steps forward because you're good at what you do. If you know you're good at what you do, you're good at what you do. And so don't let that leave your mind and and just keep pushing forward. Learn from those. Like mm-hmm. you said, I love that. Just learn from who who's already doing it, who's doing well, figure out what they're doing to get leads, to, to work those mm-hmm. leads. And because closings are still happening, mm-hmm. they're still happening. They're fewer, but they're still happening. Now it's time to capture market share. There's there's fewer closings, but there's also fewer agents. All right, yep. there's fewer agents. There's fewer lenders out there, and so now is the time you can actually capture market share. Yeah, people are still having to buy and sell. You know what? Um, uh, Bobby and Sue want their son Stephen to play football in yeah. that school district that has mm-hmm. the coach that they like. Yeah. Um, um, Sheila's got a special needs child that needs to live Mm -hmm. close to a hospital that meets, you know, her kids needs, Mm -hmm. you know, people still have life circumstances that divorces happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, things are still, you know, happening where people have to buy, sell, invest and build. That's never going to stop. So we've got to put our boots on every day and we got to look at a time like this, like where things are different now with interest rates and, and houses sitting on market longer and buyers, you know, not knowing which way to turn. We got to look at this time right now as our advantage to, to, you know, to, dig in like I am. I never had a CRM. 
You know, I never had a CRM as a real estate agent. I've had CRMs, but when I say I've never had a CRM, I've never really utilized it, right. you know, but right now I'm investing in that, you know, I'm taking time when I would be out with clients. Um, now I'm taking that time every single day to dial into my CRM and build my, build up campaigns. Like you said, mm -hmm. yes, there's a cost of doing business. Yes, there's a cost of doing business, but you have to look at it this way. I'm investing in myself. Right. I'm investing in myself, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in, in that investing in yourself, you're going to be able to help more people by doing that. And you're going to be refining yourself and you're going to be more efficient in the future. And you talked about having a therapist. I mean, I know, you know, there's a thing called, <laughs> if I say the word John Wayne syndrome, I guess you probably know what that means. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, as two men who have been to a therapist and, you know, I still have one. I mean, it, like going to a counselor, it's okay, right? I mean, Man, to, I think to, healthy to reach people out go to therapy. Right? I right? think healthy people go to therapy. So reach out and get help is, I <laughs> yeah. guess, what I'm saying. I right? think healthy people go to therapy, not unhealthy people. You know, you go to that third party who will sit there and, and really force you to stop and ponder and answer the question that they send your way genuinely. And, and, and you were thrown... So much stuff is thrown at us every day in this world, in this life, and we're just bombarded with information and, and thoughts. And when you stop and think and you, you're in that room with that person or on that Zoom, you know, telemedicine with that person, um, that's a healthy thing yeah. because you, you care about yourself and you're moving yourself forward. I know the times that I haven't gone to get the help when I needed the help and I've tried to fix it on my own, I've only made it worse. You know? Right. So it's I easy. think- and Asking for help is the thing to do. There's so many, the messages are so negative these days. I mean, you want to be well informed of what's going on in the world, but you don't need the minute by minute news cycle that we get from four different, five different, 10 different news outlets in your feed. So maybe consider deleting some of the feeds mm -hmm. that are the follows that you're doing, you know, because you don't need to be let that sort of negativity in because it's just going to bring you down. There's only so much you can do. Do your part, you know, vote for who you want to vote for, mm -hmm. you know, do what you need to do in your local community, pray, help people be out there, you know, be an advocate for, for change and for good. But you also got to protect your mind and what you let into your mind. If mm -hmm. it's constant negativity, mm -hmm. it's going to bring you down. And, uh, yeah. This I just don't think we were made for this for this device. I just don't think when God twenty four seven. Yeah, it wasn't meant for that. And so yeah. somehow we found ourselves, you know, you see the pictures, you know, of people like this, and we just weren't meant for that, mm -hmm. you know. Um there I think God meant us for something different. And so we just have to sort of reassess, I think. We're built know? for relationship, right, you know? Right. And every that's why real estate, you know, face to face, you know, there's AI, chat GPT, all that stuff today. Uh real estate's still a relationship driven business. Right. And it's always going to be a relationship driven business. Right. And um, you know, like you said, we 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 weren't built for that. I don't have Twitter on my phone. I don't follow the news. Um one of the podcast people that I listen to said uh, that I respect uh, said a while ago, um he says if anything that bad in the news happens that I need to know about, he says, when I walk into the grocery store or the it. gym, somebody's going to be talking about it. Right. And I'm going to learn about it that way. I agree. You know, and that's the truth. You know, uh, that, that's the truth. I, 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 I you don't need to be the first one to find out. I don't. I don't because guess what? I've got other things to do. I've got other things to do. Because yeah, if you're trying to be the first one to find out. You're already just, too late. That just means that you're you're probably you're probably looking at it. You're probably dialed in too, too much. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't need to be that first person. So yeah. there's just too much going on guys. So take care of yourselves out mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. That's the thing. Mentally, physically. I mean, like Bill's saying, I mean, think about his morning routine, what he's, what he's doing, you know? And so though that sort of sets himself up for success and said, you, you know, our friend, our good friend, Manuel, he told me this the other day, Manuel Domonte, shout out to him. Boom, Mandelman. But he said, you know, you can't wake up and there's a price to pay for mental energy and you can't, that that price is physical energy. And what he meant by that was you have to exert some sort of physical energy because that actually helps your brain. It gets the, there's all science behind that. But when you're exercising and you're doing the things that are, you know, cardio and you're breaking a sweat, you're doing that, it's actually helping your brain. So it helps your mental fitness. And if you're not paying that price, 
well, then you can't expect just to walk through the day, just wake up, pop out of bed with this incredible attitude all the time. I mean, it's just, it doesn't work. I'm, I would be willing to bet. I mean, there's something to do, you know, that you're doing different. There's something to do with the fact that how you do things now versus when you weighed, you know, 300 pounds. Yeah. And, you know, we're just the idea, like you said, your mom was like, oh, to feel better. Well, eat something. That was just what she knew. And, yeah. and so, yeah. you know, but now you learn that, okay, I really need to do something different. And guess what? Okay. By doing this, there's actually some benefits to my overall health. You know, it's not eat something. You'll feel better any, lo any longer for me. It's move forward mm. and do something yeah. and you'll feel yeah. better, yeah. you know, get up every day and, uh, and help people, uh, solve problems, yeah. you know, um, there's no losing. There's only winning and learning. Yeah. And, no and doubt. no losing, only winning and learning. And uh, always ask the question because if you never ask the question, answer is always no. That's right. You know? Well, man, I love you. You know that. I love you and, too, bro. Uh, I'm so glad you came. Yeah. Uh, to, to the, this is the fun, man. Here, so how did the people reach out to you? I mean, um, they want to work with you. They want to connect with you and yeah, experience. It's, uh, at L I V E live with Lurwick, L U R W I C K. So at live with Lurwick uh, on Instagram or at Hive Nashville on Instagram. And then uh, Facebook, it's just Bill Lurwick, B I L L L U R W I C K, awesome. facebook.com slash Bill Lurwick. I love it. Look him up, guys. Go see him. Bill's the man. We'll talk to you soon. See you next time.